This is Five on Your Side at Five, focused on you. Auto workers are standing on the picket lines at three major plants across the country, including the GM plant in Wentzville. That is after United Auto Workers Union and three large automakers didn't reach a deal during contract negotiations. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Kelly Jackson. And I'm Brent Solomon. And All Red has the day off. Tonight, new reaction on that strike, which is expected to have a big impact on the car industry as a whole. We have team coverage for you tonight with Tracy Henson and Justina Cornell following the latest developments. We start with Justina, who is live in Wentzville for us. Justina. Yeah, Brent, so there are five entrances at the plant here and in front of each and every single one, people are striking in front. All of them have signs in their hands and many are engaging with the drivers that are conking, giving them support during this time. Now, Wentzville is among the three specific units chosen to strike and that's because we're told there are the most productive plants in each corporation. Just at this plant, more than 4,000 members work here. Nationwide and locally, members are demanding better wages, shorter work work weeks and more benefits. Just yesterday morning, General Motors offered another deal. GM CEO voiced her frustration this morning by saying they put in a historic contract on the table, but still no deal. Earlier today, we also spoke to the president at Automotive Lodge 777. That union is also supporting UAW 2250. So we're out here today in the community uh, letting uh, you know the, the businesses know that we're here not to bring them down, but to educate them and let them know the effect that this strike is going to have on them. Now, earlier today, the, the Wentzville mayor was here going to each and every gate, talking to every member to show his support. We're told he'll return back here tonight. Reporting live, Christina Cornell, five on your side. Time is money and every minute the strike ticks on, not only are the automakers losing dollars, but loss will trickle down into local economies. That's right. Following your size, Tracy Henson is here with much more from experts and even businesses. Tracy. Brent and Kelly, the difference with this strike compared to the one in 2019 is that it's not only GM, it's the Detroit Three. An expert I spoke with said that means this strike will have greater impact on the economy. The Ford, the Stellantis, and uh, General Motors. Uh, if we're looking at the one that occurred in 2019, that was just focused on General Motors uh, itself. So it's, uh, in my viewpoint, I think this has a much broader impact overall to the United States. Professor's and, uh, Edition is an expert on this. Well, the focus I've had throughout my career is understanding uh, supply chain risk and resilience. Basically, he looks at all the things that could go wrong in the supply chain, like worker strikes. That is a form of a supply chain uh, disruption uh, that can occur. And a costly one at that. Oh my heaven, so uh, time is, uh, in my opinion, the most valuable asset any individual or company can have. And that once you lose out on that time for being able to produce those respective uh, products for your customers, you can never get that back. The current strike is not a total shutdown, so for the time being, impact will be limited. I do not see it having very significant effects uh, for the next week or thereabouts, but if this extends or expands, it could have absolutely devastating effects on uh, many, many people. The automotive industry is one of our key industries here in the United States. Like with most things, the problem is money. It does come down to money, but not just that. It's also taking care of your employees because your employees are any company's greatest asset. So yeah, the, um, the language of business is money, but you always have to take care of your people as well. Now, I reached out to a few St. Louis car dealers. Bomberito got back to me and said they planned for this and built up a supply of GM vehicles and parts to take care of their customers. Today, President Biden talked about the strike, telling automakers to go further to make a deal with the union. Let's be clear. No one wants a strike. Say it again. No one wants a strike. But I respect workers' right to use their options under the collective bargaining system. And I understand the workers' frustration. And we will continue to keep you updated on UAW contract negotiations on air and online at KSDK.com. You can also get updated on the Five in Your Side app and Five Plus. Now at Five, Illinois State Police investigating a crash that killed three people in Madison County. It happened around four this morning on Route 4 near Route 40. That's in between Troy and St. Jacob. Police say a car crossed the center line, crashing into another car. 
Two drivers and a passenger died. Police have not released their names. Tonight, the St. Louis community is mourning the loss of a student at Sumner High School. 16-year-old Antonio Thompson was found shot multiple times Wednesday night on Minerva Avenue near Goodfellow. So far, no suspects have been arrested. St. Louis Public Schools released a statement last night saying, quote, our hearts go out to his friends, family, and classmates. There will be counselors and mental health professionals at the school. If you have information, you are asked to call police. Well, a man is charged with killing his own mother in Troy, Illinois. Police say Neil Howard strangled Norma Carriker earlier this week after uh, at her home on Laura Marine Road. Now, Carriker is also the widow of the town's former mayor, Tom Carriker. He's now in jail on a $3 million bond. Let's talk about our weather, our weekend weather. The Cardinals are at home playing tonight. Oh, Perfect yeah. baseball weather. It really is. Let's check in with meteorologist Jim Castillo, who's back on his big return week. We're so glad to have you, Jeff. Yeah, it's so good to be <laughs> here. Good to see you too, Brent. It's been a while for us. You were off for a couple of days, but uh, Kelly, uh, gorgeous weather out there. In fact, the Cardinals are seeing very dry air tonight and temperatures at about 74 at 7 o'clock, 65 at 10, and they're playing the Phillies. So 7.15 start time and you just can't beat this weather. Look at that humidity at 21%, 81 right now. It got up to 83, but we started out at 53 this morning. When you get that dry air, you get really cool mornings and then you get those warm afternoons. So as we get into Saturday, there's not a lot of moisture with this front like Scotty was talking about at four o'clock, but there is a chance of some scattered shower activity and maybe a rumble of thunder. We're seeing that now in southern Nebraska. So coming up in Maine weather, I'll talk a little bit more about those shower and thunderstorm chances for Saturday and I'll time it out. But right now, uh, clouds on the increase later today tonight and temperatures a little milder in the 50s to around 60 guys. All right, see you then. St. Louis aldermen are pushing to pass tougher gun restrictions in city limits. The effort could put the city on a crash course with Missouri state law, which prohibits local governments from even outlawing guns. Our political editor Mark Maxwell has new details for us. Brenton Kelly, the Board of Aldermen recently restricted open carry of firearms only to people who have a concealed carry permit. Now, city leaders want to expand on those rules and crack down on unregistered or untraceable firearms. For example, if you get caught carrying a gun with a serial number scratched off, you might face penalties under one new proposal. Another targets untraceable ghost guns, machine guns, sawed off shotguns, silencers, or exploding ammunition. Those things already restricted under federal law. A third new proposal at City Hall would direct gun violation fines to the Office of Violence Prevention and bolster the city's efforts to fight crime. Alderwoman Shamim Clark Hubbard explained why we're seeing this push now after years of the city acquiescing to lax state laws that discourage gun regulation on the local level. So we're working again with the counselor's office to make sure we can get them as tight as we can again, knowing that uh, we are preempted by the state. But where we can thread the needle, where we can thread the needle, that's what we're going to do so that it can be a tool, right, for us to be able to get some of these weapons off the street. The Board of Aldermen is also preparing tougher gun restrictions even if they're barred by state law. The hope there is to craft those bills even as a dead letter, if you will, hoping that one day lawmakers or voters might activate them. 